what if I have these three images? I want the man and the woman to be sitting exactly in that cafe. I want to create a video with a single click. Well, now you can very, very easily. If I want to add some rain to it, I can do it again with a single click. What if I want to add some snow? Very easy. What if I want to see how this video looks from a different angle? Maybe like a drone shot. Not just transformations, however. What if I want to see what would have happened before these two people were sitting there? I can also generate before and after scenes now. What if I want to add this cute little dog into this scene? Again, with a single click, I can do it. Basically, now you can edit your videos in any way that you want just by writing a simple prompt. This is thanks to the all new Kling O1 AI video editor, which is capable of doing so much more than just editing or transforming an existing video. We'll be seeing how to access it. Now it can be used for free, but only for a very limited number of generations a month. You'll be seeing 15 different examples, the good and the bad, because I'll be showing you the output that I achieved right on the first go so that you get an honest review when it comes to this tool. It's a direct competitor to Runway Aleph. And in a lot of these examples, I'll be showing you the results from Runway 2 so that we can get a direct comparison between the two. What you'll also realize is that in a lot of these examples, it's actually much better to simply use Nano Banana Pro, create an image and then turn it into a video. So we'll be seeing some examples of that also at the end. I'll also be talking about which platform is the best when it comes to accessing this tool. So let's get started with our first example. Before we get started, if you're short on time and you're looking for a short answer, it is no. This tool is right now half-baked. As you're going to be seeing in the examples that I'll be showing you, majority of the times the output looks very poor. It's okay for social media or a hobby purpose, but when it comes to producing real results that can be used commercially, this tool right now is just not ready for that. And I will be showing you in this video some of the alternative approaches that you can take to get much better looking results. So the first and the most straightforward way to access this tool is by Kling's own web app. I'll leave a link to this website in the description. You can access it, create your free account, and you will receive 166 credits that can be used to create these videos. Once you see this interface, you are going to go over to Kling01 here. It can also be accessed using all the different popular all-in-one AI platforms and I'll be showing you my favorite one later on in another example. But right now, this is how things look on the native web app. So it's a very simple interface to use. You basically get four categories here. One is called elements, transformation, video reference and frames. Now, we'll be avoiding frames because it's nothing but starting and ending frame, which works exactly like the other Kling model. So we'll be focusing on these three. So let's start off with the elements feature for our first example, where we have these three images. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload all these images right here. And now I can type in a prompt like this, the man in, and then each image will get attacked. So I can hit the at symbol and then just make sure I mention it here. Even if you don't, it still works, but it's just better to do it. And similarly, I can say the woman in are sitting in the cafe shown in and do the same thing again, image three. And then you can mention some other things. They're looking at the camera and smiling and waving their hands. So you can see the elements category is pretty straightforward. You're basically going to combine different images here and then create a composite video. And when it comes to the settings, it's pretty straightforward. Here, we're going to select video generation, though you can also generate images. So Kling O1 can also be used like something like Nano Banana, but the quality isn't that great. So let's just stick to video generation here. And then in the video model, obviously, we're going to select Kling O1. And then you get some settings here. You can't really change the first setting, which is mode. So this is going to be on professional. The duration, since we are not, since we did not upload an existing video, we are now free to choose a duration. Whenever you work with an existing video, it will automatically take in the duration of that video itself. But since here we are generating a brand new video from images, we are free to choose the duration. Each second in the elements feature will cost you eight credits. So you can see it's going to be 40 credits, but right now Kling is running a discount. So it's going to cost me around 30 credits here. And then I can also select the aspect ratio. So let's say I go in for something like 
9 by 16 and I only want one output here. Now before I hit generate, I just wanted to talk about the cost involved here. So it completely depends on the type of edit you're doing. For example, we are under the elements category. Since we are not using an existing video, it's slightly cheaper. In the transformation category, as you're gonna see, it's around 12 credits per second. So I basically took the average, and this is what you should know. Kling 01 will cost you around 15 cents per second of any sort of a transformation. So for any meaningful video, that's around a dollar per video. So that's not too expensive, but that's not too cheap. So be careful about that. Like I said, on your free plan, you get 166 credits. So at least you will be able to create around three or four of these videos. All right, so I've already done this before. So if I just open this up, let's play this video again. You can see here, we definitely do get that man and the same woman and the cafe also looks fantastic. However, one of the problems with Kling 01 just like the problems we've had with tools like Runway Aleph is that it's gonna produce a lot of these AI artifacts and the issues that used, we used to face with AI long back. For example, you can see here, he only has three fingers here. Also, if you notice his eyes and even her left eye here, it just looks a bit distorted. Now, in my opinion, where Kling01 does better is at transforming an existing video. So in a scenario like this, I would highly recommend that you create this composite image in something like Nano Banana. So for example, I did exactly the same thing in Google Gemini. I got this image first and you can see it instantly looked better. I then transformed it into a video using Kling's image to video tools like Kling 2.5. And then I had a much better looking video without any of these artifacts. And let's say now I want to transform this video, maybe I want to add some rain, I want to add some snow, then this is a better approach because then this video is going to look devoid of any of those artifacts. So that's exactly what I did. Got a good looking video and actually use Kling 01 to transform it. So let me show you how that works. So how this will work is I will go over to the transformation category here. And here I'm going to get rid of all these images that I had uploaded. And instead, I'll only upload the video that I had created using Nano Banana and Kling. So let's do that. All right, so the video is here and then you just write in your prompt. So since I've already done it, this was the prompt here. It is raining, the man and the woman are looking up and trying to protect themselves from the rain. So remember this is under the transformation category. So it will produce those changes in the existing video that you upload here. So let's see the result right here. So you can see it does well with the weather, but there are definitely issues when it comes to their faces here. That's one problem that Kling01 has, just like Runway Aleph has. But when it just comes to, if you just see the effect here, this is not bad at all. Similarly, in this example, I had just written, it is snowing, didn't write anything else at all. I think this time it just did a much better job. So. As long as they're still maintaining that eye contact with the camera and you don't really ask them to change the way or the direction in which they're looking, I've seen it doesn't really produce those artifacts. So you can see this is a pretty good result. So this is all happening under the transformation category. The video reference category is slightly different. I'll also come to that in a while from now, but this was again under the transformation category. I had just written, turn this into a drone shot. And I think this also looked pretty good. It just messed up with the text here, you can see. Now, one of the new things that we have not seen up till now is that under the video reference category here, you can actually create the next shot in the scene by uploading a reference video. So it's gonna analyze the entire video and you can just type in something like this, generate the scene either before or after and then give it a short description. So it'll actually do that. So in this case, this time we are under the video reference category. I had written, generate the scene before this, where this man and woman walk toward the table and take a seat. And you can see it did a pretty good job here. So you're gonna see. And sometimes if you just leave this open-ended, you just type in something like generate the next scene, then you don't know what it's gonna give you. Is you look, You're completely dependent on the AI there. But this can be great for AI filmmakers who are looking to extend an existing scene. And then it's gonna just keep your subjects consistent and 
generate that next scene according to whatever you've written in the prompt. And then this is faster than the traditional approach of using the last frame and then using that last frame as the first frame of the next video and then writing in a prompt. However, I should point out that it always doesn't yield very good results. We'll be seeing some more examples of this later on in this video. So another thing that you can do is that you can combine an image that you upload along with the video that you've uploaded. So again, you can do that under the transformation category here. So if I go here, remember we had already uploaded this particular video, but I also wanted this dog to come into this existing video. In that case, you're just gonna hit this image icon and then upload the photograph of this dog. And the prompt I had used was the dog in at this particular image, okay, just using the tagging feature comes into the scene basically. And you can see the result here. So you can even add like a completely foreign element in an existing video like this. So this example worked really well. This was the original video where there was lots of traffic and I just wanted to remove this. So this was under the transformation category and I had just written remove all the cars and traffic except for the two people standing in the center. And if I show you the result here, I think this looked really, really good. It pretty much did a flawless job. In the next example, I had this video of this band playing and I actually wanted to replace the guitarist with this image that I had. So basically with this guitarist and this didn't really work because again under the transformation category I'd uploaded both the video and the image and used the tags in the prompt. So replace the guitarist in the video with the man in the image. And what it did was it actually replaced but it replaced the woman who was singing. Now even if we do make an allowance for that and we say okay at least it replaced some person even then that's not enough because if I open this up if you just notice his right hand here, it just did not look real at all. It had all those sorts of artifact distortion problems that we are so used to uh, in the AI world. So this is a perfect example where again, something like this is just much better in Nano Banana because then what I did was I took a screenshot from the original video and then replaced the man inside Nano Banana and then use Kling to animate that image. And this was the result I got. And this just looked like a much cleaner result. So in a lot of these examples, using Nano Banana and a combination of something like Kling 2.5 is just much better. Now, the only argument against this can be if you really want to retain the original movement in the original video. Now, let's also see some examples of how it compares to Runway Aleph because that is what it is directly competing with. I already have a separate video on Runway Aleph. If you haven't seen that, this is the one. I'll leave the link to this in the description. You can check it out later. But right now here, we had this original video of just these two people walking and I had just written under the transformation category. After uploading the video, the two people in the video disintegrate into dust. Make sure the same happens in the reflection so that the people can be seen, uh, that is seen on the right here, okay? And I was hoping that at some point, they are just gonna go away and it never happened. You'll just see something here. Can you see? So it just got confused or basically just didn't work at all. However, exactly with the same prompt, this was the result that Runway Aleph had produced. And you can see that this just did the job absolutely perfectly. This is another example. You can see when the ball is kicked, it turns into a fireball. So first of all, it was already like this. And the VFX here just looked a bit cheesy. You can see here, right? Doesn't really feel like the ball itself is on fire. It feels more like this is an overlay of fire on the ball. However, again, this is the result that Runway Aleph produced and I actually liked it way, way better. Another comparison with Runway Aleph, again, under the transformation category, it uploaded a original video and an image, replace the woman in this video with the woman in the image. Let's see the result here. Again, okay, that face just does not look real. Overall, the replacement wasn't bad, but once you see the result by Runway Aleph, you'll actually realize the kind of result I was going in for. So this is the result by Aleph. And this, in my opinion, was absolutely amazing because it also understood that we want to keep the bride intact and mainly just replace the face and it just did it flawlessly.
All right, so via this example, I also want to show you that uh, Kling one is now available in most of the all-in-one AI apps out there. So my favorite one is Hicksfield AI. And there, if you just hover over the video category, you will be now able to see Kling one So you can see here, the thing I like about Hicksfield is that now it's all in just one easy interface like this. So you can upload your reference video here. So I've just edited this video. I'll be showing you what this was about. If you want to add any images, any reference images like we've been doing up till now, you do that on this part. You simply write in your prompt and then you can select the duration and the aspect ratio. And it is slightly cheaper than using it back over at Kling. However, don't compare the credits here directly with the credits there because obviously Hicksfield has its own pricing. However, it is slightly cheaper. And towards the end of the video, I'll also be telling you why using an all-in-one AI app, in my opinion, is slightly better for using Kling one But right now, let's see the results. So in the original video, it was just a man talking in this empty room, basically. We want to fill this up. So this was the result. Unfortunately, again, if you just look at it like this, it looks fine. However, if I was to really stop this video, open this up and focus on the people there. I mean, just look at this. So it's okay again for social media usage, but for serious work, I would still definitely not use an output like this. For our next example, let's see what happens when we use the video reference category and ask it to just generate the next scene. So you can see here, the original video was this one where these people are just coming together and talking. And then I had just written, generate the next scene where the three people start walking away from the camera. So you can see, it's did a pretty good job. Everything was consistent, the clothing, the people, the scene. And something like this can really be amazing for filmmakers because then with a single prompt, you have your next scene ready. Another use case of transformation can be to change the angle, just like we had seen before. So this was the original video and I just written change the angle so we see a medium close-up of the woman with the man in the foreground, then change the angle so we see the medium close-up of the man with the woman in the foreground. So I was expecting this back and forth to take place because it was a long video, 10 seconds, however, it just didn't produce the desired result. It definitely changed the angle, but it did not give that composition at all that I was going in for. This was another example where this was the original video and I wanted to create a drone shot out of this. This was the result I got. And this was extremely, extremely poor because if you look at their faces, their bodies is just completely, completely distorted and also on its own added these three people here. This was another disappointing result. I had this original video and I wanted the man behind the woman to be replaced by this man. So that's exactly what I had done under the transformation category. And it actually replaced the woman and even the results weren't that great. So you can see the faces, it just completely distorted all of those. So I think it's fair to say that just like with Runway Aleph, this definitely feels like a half-baked product. Okay for social media stuff, but stay away from it when it comes to serious commercial work. And this is the reason why, if you are to use this tool, I actually recommend that you use it inside something like a, a Hicks field, because then you have so many other tools at your disposal, this can be treated as a bonus. So anytime you feel you need to edit a particular video, you can just try it out and see if Kling 01 is gonna give you that result. However, if you were to register back at Kling, then you're really stuck with this tool only. But that's it for now. Kling 2.6, by the way, is also out. I will soon be reviewing it because now it has built in audio too. And I think that is a tool that deserves more attention. And you can expect it here on this channel very, very soon. But in case this video helped you out, do give it a like. And for more AI tutorials, make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.